Well, you're all laughing, but uh, if you talk to our Connor terrorism people, ISIS is going to come kill you anyway. Uh, they said they greatly underestimated ISIS. Because what they didn't understand is that ISIS knows how to use social media. I'm not even sure our counterintelligence people knew what social media was. But they've, now they're, they're catching up. They've gone on uh, ISIS websites and they found out they're merchandising T-shirts. And the most popular T-shirt is Suicide Bomber in Training. <laughs> and, and that turns out to be a, bur a burqa magnet. Uh, the uh, buzz on the Arab street is if you wear this t-shirt to one of the Arab clubs, the j j jihadis, uh, that you have a good shot at getting your virgins here on earth. <laughs> <laughs> the other iTube things they use are really recruiting ads. There's one with a, a fighter with a giant uh, fire behind him, and the caption is, Jihad. Just do it. <laughs> and we've been trying to figure out how people get there, how do they get to Syria from the United States to join the Jihad, and it, you just have to look at the website. There's two links there. One is to Uber ISIS, <laughs> and the other one is to ISIS Airbnb. <laughs> Obama's given up trying to explain ISIS. He can't do it. So what he says now is ISIS. It is what it is. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> Our friends at the World Health Organization last week, you may have heard this, said that uh, we need to have new names for our diseases. That some people are very offended at the current names. The pigs, for example, were extremely upset at swine flu. <laughs> so they've given some suggestions. Lou Gehrig's disease from now on will be called the Ice Bucket Challenge Disease. <laughs> heart attacks will be called heart embraces. <laughs> Necrophilia will be called endless love syndrome. And finally, cancer will simply be called ISIS. <laughs> there are also new procedures, as you may have heard, this uh, Italian surgeon, uh, and this is true, uh, is proposing to do head transplants. It's for people who are reasonably satisfied with their head, but think that their body is just disgusting. <laughs> and it's even beyond the reach of diet and exercise to change. So the procedure, and he has a name for it, called head anastomosis venture. And that's right, you'll never hear anastomosis in another comic routine, <laughs> ever, ever in your life. <laughs> The short term for it is heaven. He says all he needs to proceed now is a super sharp knife to cut the heads off, the uh, donor and the recipient. <laughs> when he does it, it's science. When ISIS does it, it's a war crime. <laughs> There's another new procedure, and this is true. Uh, the first world's first successful penis transplant has just been done in South Africa. And the surgeon was criticized. He said, well, it's not a vital organ. How can you justify a transplant that requires lifelong immunosuppression drugs? And the surgeon said, you know, a person without a penis is essentially dead. <laughs> he also said that he thought that, that his experience was that finding a donor uh, was especially challenging. <laughs> you know, your brother might give you a kidney, but not, not going there. Uh, finally, of course, the World Health Organization uh, wanted a different name than penis transplant that shook people. People couldn't even think about that. It freaked them out. So they have a new name. Uh, it's called Purple Pickle Prick Peter Piper Picked. Thank you very much. <laughs>